So Jeremy, you've been using Copilot for quite some time. You're one of the first or early adopters uh, having access to Copilot. Can you maybe show us uh, how you use Copilot every day um, and how it's bringing you value? And maybe if you've got any insights or uh, demonstrations or examples that you can share with everybody uh, on how Copilot is bringing you value. Yeah, so when I think about my daily use of Copilot, so I'm working on Microsoft Mechanics, obviously, a lot. We're in a lot of Teams meetings, and one of the things that I use a lot because we are often in back-to-back -back meetings is using the meeting catch-up, the recap uh, functionality through the transcript and being able to catch up on anything that I might have missed, say, for the first five or six minutes, sometimes ten minutes of a meeting if I'm late to it. So that's one thing I use every single day, multiple times per day. But the other thing, when you think about it from mechanics, we're always switching between topics. Like one minute I might be working on quantum computing, something uh, you know with a lot of specialized terms. The next minute I might be working on Microsoft purview topics and then a database topic. That might be in the span of one day. And a lot of times we're taking that and we're doing basically our homework. We're kind of like investigative journalists, you know, in terms of how we're doing that, working across the different teams. So a lot of that type of work, researching like, what does this acronym mean? You know, terms like, you know, maybe they come up like low boil dielectric fluid. What does that mean when I dip a hard, you know, hardware into, into water so that it doesn't short it out, but it's actually cooling it? Those types of things are, you know, we were just working with Mark Rasinovich. So what is low rank adaptive fine tuning and how does that process work? Those are the things that you can actually use very well with web grounding as part of Microsoft Copilot to answer those types of questions. So in addition to that, we write a lot of different, uh, you know, mechanics like storyboards and documents in terms of like keeping us honest about the different points that we should cover with the right notes and the right sequence of what we do. So kind of as a proxy to that, I'll show you something that you can do that I think is pretty, pretty compelling in terms of being able to write documents that you might write every single day. So I'm going to share my screen again. This time, though, I'll, sh I'll start in a Word document here. Now, the Word document uh, on the left-hand side, you can see that I've actually got a KB article. So I'll just, I'll just um, go through what's, what's all there. Now here, so if I go into what's actually in the document, let me just hold on a sec. I'm going to turn off my laser pointer. There we go. So if I go into the document on the left-hand side, I actually have my article. Just to kind of scroll down the article, you can see it's got support documentation, things that you might write every day, things I used to write when I was working every day in IT. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got all the kind of main points. And this is the format that I want to be able to basically copy as I write a new document uh, with how to use, in my case, Intune uh, Remote Help. So this might be the same as if you write letters of intent all day or sales agreements, those types of things. I've got my notes here on the right. I kind of want to make um, a document out of the two of those. And the, the main way to do this is being very specific with your prompts. So I've got a prompt that says, write me a new article, cite the original KB818, the one on the left, and write a new one based on my new notes on the right. And additional information can be sought through Microsoft.com for Intune Remote Help. So this is running at normal speed. And you can see as it starts to create the article, it's in the same format as the one on the left. It's gone out and it's actually found additional information. Remember, my, my document was pretty spartan on the right in terms of all the things that it had to find information for, because I just had a couple of different bullet point steps as to how to do a remote help session. So it's found out what remote help is, how it works through Microsoft.com sites. In our case, it started to create another knowledge base article for that for my IT team. And it's going to basically uh, continue writing everything for me to where it's not gonna maybe get it to where it's 100% exactly how I want it when it's all done, but it's saving me a lot of initial research, a lot of time, especially compared to the notes, because it knows that I want something similar to the document that I had written before, and it's used that basically as inspiration to help write something similar to that using my notes. Then it's gone and used the web grounding, like I mentioned with grounding before, to be able to find the additional information as part of that. So that's one example of using that inside of Word. Now, there we just saw not only text generation, we saw it parsing longer than it would normally be able to look at the document on the left that for the prompt. So it had to orchestrate all of that. Then it had to take all the additional information in the web and in the other document on the right. 
Now it's given me a personalized response in the voice and tone that I want that matches that original left side document. Now, what I can also do, which I think is pretty cool, is use this to help me create a PowerPoint presentation. So one of the great things is you can actually move from one document type or mode, mode to another. So here I'm going to go into uh, an actual PowerPoint example where um, I'm going to reference the Word file that we just wrote. So if I do that, I can just use create a presentation about, and this is the difference here because I can actually use a forward slash then cite a source that's inside of SharePoint effectively. Now that's personalizing that experience. So I don't have to do any copy paste or look for the text and like put it into a browser window. I just have to point to that file and it's going to parse all the information that we just saw uh, as it generated that brand new document. It's looking up all the steps around remote help. And of course it's got to do it in a way that's conducive to PowerPoint because it's got to be a lot less wordy and a lot more kind of step by step at a high level. And it does all of that. So it gives me a nice slide deck with all kind of the top level things that you have to do without going really super into the weeds in terms of all of the uh, manual step by step processes that were in the document. I can use designer if I want to add additional kind of design to it. And I'd probably again, this is in a fully completed document. But what I'd probably want to do here is go in and add like screenshots or other things to augment this PowerPoint deck and kind of walk through all the different steps for going through a remote help session using the Intune suite as part of that document that we generated before in Word. So again, these are really powerful sources and you can see in the presentation, kind of in the notes itself in the, in the slide notes, this presentation was automatically generated by PowerPoint and using Copilot based on the content that was found in this document linked to the document. So it's actually cited the source as part of the notes inside the PowerPoint. So you know exactly where the source material came from. And that way you can, it's, it's not only grounding it on accurate data that you've kind of proofed and you've loaded to a, a good source and you've referenced it as part of your prompt, but it, even as future users of this PowerPoint see it, they'll know exactly where to go to look for the source of the content so that they, they can ensure that everything is still up to date. Maybe if they open it a year from now or the process might've changed a little bit, they'll be able to see exactly you know, where that was originally built from.